Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. We are going to wait a little longer for the others because we know that uh, we are, we have a couple of minutes to the, the uh, hour, but we are going to start uh, in this moment because I have another group and I want to have like this couple of minutes. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a question. ¿Se escucha bien ahorita el sonido? Sí, aquí sí. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. We are in session number two of this second week. Um, we are going to continue with the part that we were uh, learning yesterday. Um, we were talking about the adjectives. So in... We are going to make like a little review while we are waiting for the others because it's going to one minute more for the the, the proper hour. Um, we were talking about the adjectives and uh, yesterday we were talking about the different uh, categories we can say uh, or groups because we were talking about groups of these adjectives. So um, we have, I guess, four. We were talking about four categories of these adjectives. We have in this topic, the first one, that is the adjectives of uh, quality, uh, that it's referring to nouns that are not countable. Um, in, that, in that case, you are going to use it like that or I mean, we can, uh, in that case, it is referring to the words that we can also have from nouns, verbs, and other adjectives, that it is like transforming the information that we have. Also, we have in the number two, the adjectives of quantity, that in this case, I mean, in this case, it is related to the nouns that are not countable. And we have some examples like the word some, much, later, enough. Then we have the number three, that is the adjective of number, that in this case is related to the countable nouns. And it is related also with the numbers. And the last one that we were talking about yesterday, was the demonstrative adjectives. And that is the part that we are going to continue right now with the demonstrative adjectives. And also we are going to see the uh, comparison using adjectives and how can we create that, um, that words because we are going to use that specific part of the topic because I was telling you yesterday that we are going to have like, three different sessions in which we are going to talk about the adjectives. Ayer les explicaba que vamos a tener tres sesiones diferentes donde vamos a estar hablando de los adjetivos, pero no es eh, el tema en general, sino en diferentes partes. Yesterday we were talking about the categories or the main eh, information about the adjectives. Now we are going to talk about the comparison of adjectives or the comparative adjectives because we are going to make comparison between two things or more and then we are going to have a vocabulary a specific vocabulary but that part is for uh, tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to see the vocabulary and also we are going to have some exercises using um, that vocabulary and that is the last thing that we are going to see about the adjectives. Because you know that um, in general words, the adjectives are words that we can use to express details about something. So in this case, we are going to see what are the last parts or the last ideas that we have 
about the demonstrative adjectives, and we are going to see uh, general information about the comparison of adjectives. We are going to see another categories, and then we are going to focus on comparative adjectives. How to create them, what are the differences, and how can we know that we are using that comparative adjectives. And also we are going to see um, like one syllable words, two syllable words, and all of the things and what kind of word we can use to uh, make that adjective comparative. Así que vamos a tener un poco más de información de los adjetivos, um, pero nos vamos a enfocar más que todo en los comparativos. Tenemos que hablar de cómo podemos hacer comparaciones, porque ese es el main topic for today. We are going to continue with this topic, but we are going to have more information about the comparative adjectives. And we are going to have like a lot of examples because it is necessary for us to complete understanding of this topic. So we were talking about the demonstrative adjectives. That is the last part that we were talking about yesterday. And in that case, it was saying that they indicate the noun, that is the point out the person, place or a thing, in this case, it is not period, it is a comma, is a person, a place or a thing to which we are referring. And also we were saying that this category of adjectives is a, like answering a question and a specific question. So they, I mean, they answer they answer the question which some such adjectives are this, that, these, and those. In this case, those adjectives or the adjectives are, and we have these, that, these, and those. So and in this case, we have like, um, we are going to use this and that for singular um, for singular nouns in that case, this and that. And this and those are for plurals. Así que los primeros dos, this and that, los estamos utilizando para lo que son los eh, singulares, o sea, nombres singulares. Y los últimos dos, as these and those, es para los nombres plurales. And we have examples of the uh, adjectives. And we have here the first one. Let's see. It says, these are the clothes I was looking for. These are the clothes I was looking for. Estas son las ropas que he estado buscando o que estaba buscando. Then, those are my books. Those are my books. Esos son mis libros. Then, in this part, we have the number five. That are the interrogative adjectives. And in this part, we have that the interrogative adjectives are used before a noun, when we want to ask a question about the noun. Some such adjectives are what, which, and whose. En este caso vamos a utilizar primero esta palabra que nos va a servir a nosotros como interrogación o como 
eh, para hacer la pregunta y lo vamos a utilizar antes del de nombre porque obviamente queremos saber más información sobre el nombre del que estamos utilizando en nuestra interrogación. And we have some examples. We have in the first one, it said, which books do you want? Which books do you want? ¿Cuáles libros quieres? So in that case, we are uh, asking about the books. Books as are the noun in that case, or is the noun that we are using for that question. Which books do you want? ¿Cuáles libros quieres? And then, whose coat it is? Whose coat is this? ¿De quién es ese abrigo? In that case, coat is the noun that we are using for this um, category. Now, we have five categories that we can use with the adjectives. In this uh, topic, we were saying that we have a lot of words that we can use, and we already know that um, there are a lot of words that we can use as an adjective, but in this case, we are just uh, putting into categories because um, they have a specific uh, way to use. So in that case, um, we know that we have colors and a lot of the things that are very, very basic because it is the, the first thing that we learn about the adjectives. So in this case, we just are like putting those words into different groups that we can know uh, how to use them and also you can know through this topic that we have like this kind of words uh, or the question words or the WH words that we can use for questions that are functioning as an adjective also. A veces vemos estas palabras, pero no, no estamos tan seguros de que sean en realidad adjetivos, sino que los utilizamos más que todo para preguntas y cosas así pero también pueden funcionar como adjetivos, ya que está uh, dándole like it's giving the noun a specific use. In this case, it's giving more information about that or is uh, changing something. So in that case, we have a lot of words that we can use and it is not like exclusive in that case. Now, we are going to Uh, have that information there and we are going to uh, change that uh, information about the adjectives because we are going to talk about the comparative degree of adjectives. Vamos a enfocarnos en el tema específico de hoy que son los uh, comparative degrees of adjectives. ¿Por qué? Because we are going to use the comparison. Vamos a, a utilizar la comparación para nuestros ejercicios. So, we are going to talk about the comparative degrees of adjective. We have the positive, comparative degree, superlative degree, and we are going to have some specification about the uses of them. And also, we are going to see some examples, but then we are going to have more information about the comparative degree. So, We are going to have here the topic that are, that is the comparative degree of adjectives. Sí. 
this is um this is not a new topic maybe you have learned something about this topic but sometimes we forget some ideas some information about this kind of topics so that's why it is necessary to see again that information and remember all the things that we know about these topics so it says that the adjectives are used to describe some quality of the person, place, or thing that we are talking about. Sometimes the extent or the degree of that quality needs to be mentioned in comparison with that same quality in another object. So when we are talking about a person, when we're talking about a place, when we're talking about an animal also, uh, we need to express uh, maybe uh, the qualities of that uh, things that we are uh, talking about. And also we need to say that something is more than or is less than or is better than. And in that case, we are going to use this kind of a uh, comparative degree of adjectives. En este caso, cuando vamos a hacer las comparaciones, es para decir, ah, eso fue más grande que, fue más pequeño que, or something like that. So in that case, we need to say the degree of that quality in the things that we are describing. This last part is the thing that I was saying that we need to mention that the quality is, it's like to say that we have two objects that have a, not the same, but uh, related uh, qualities, but we need to say which one is better or which one is the worst or something like that. Es hacer la comparación y dar a entender cuál de los objetos, cuál de la persona, cuál de las eh, cosas que estamos describiendo o son superiores, son inferiores, eh, tiene algo que el, el otro no tiene y en muchos de los casos tiene que ser algo parecido, un mismo objeto, personas or something like that. So in that case, it is like we need to mention that uh, both objects, uh, both uh, person, uh, people have the same quality, but in a different degree, in un grado diferente. Then we have that adjectives have three degrees of comparison. Los adjetivos tienen tres um, grados de comparación. They have three degrees of comparison.
So we have the number one in this case. We are going to have it like this. The number one is the positive degree. Positive degree. This one is that the adjective in its simple form. It is used simply to denote the existence of a particular quality in the person, place, or thing that we are talking about. In this case, it's not like we are going to have two different objects or we are going to talk about two different uh, people. In this case, it's just to mention the quality or something that we have. So we have an example of this one, and we have very simple. We have the expression, my suitcase is heavy. My suitcase is heavy. In this case, we have the word heavy, this one, that is the adjective. And I am not talking about another thing. I am just saying that I have something that is heavy. Um, my hair is curly, for example, and I am not making a comparison between anything because I am just saying that my hair is curly. Another example, we can say my cell phone is old. And we have here the word old. En este del positive degree, solo estamos hablando de lo que nosotros tenemos o de lo que nosotros estamos explicando. No hacemos una comparación de ningún tipo con nada. Okay, I'm sorry, it's starting raining here. So that's why I have problem with the connection, but everything is okay right now. So I was saying that in the positive uh, adjectives, we have these ones in which we are just describing something. So let's see, I need your help because I need to see some examples more about this category. Voy a necesitar eh, ayuda para escribir más ejemplos sobre esta categoría. So, can you please write a sentence using adjectives like these ones? Um, just um, like explaining or giving more information about a specific thing. Tiene que ser un ejemplo donde ustedes dan más información acerca de una sola cosa. Así que si pueden escribir una oración en el chat para irlos viendo y poner más ejemplos de esta categoría. Using adjectives, in this case, positive degree, without making comparison of anything.
Okay, we have one here. Let's see. Ah, my dog is a young. Good. My dog is young. Then we have my motorcycle is blue. Good. Okay, in that case, we are going to change something about the word tallest, because in that case, you are making comparison, or in this case, it's superlative form. So in this case, for the positive, we are going to say, my brother is tall. Solo lo vamos a dejar así, porque tallest es el superlativo, ¿sí? que es más alto que cualquier otra persona que está a su alrededor. So in this case, for the positive degree, we are just going to say hall. My house, okay. My house is comfortable. Then my cat is cute, good. My cat is cute. My car is classy, good. Okay, my dog is beautiful. My sister is shy. Three, six, seven, eight. My mom is beautiful, good. Nine. Vamos a poner solo tres más. Let's see, let's see. Nobody? Okay, let's see. Three more sentences just to complete 12. Um, we are going to use like physical appearance. He is, oh, let me see. My pen is green, good. Thank you. We have, he is handsome. And she has black hair. Good, we have three, six, nine, twelve. So in that case, let's see one more. My neighbors are annoyed. My neighbors are noisy. I see. My neighbors are noisy. Okay. Thank you for your participation. So, in this case, you can see these um, simple sentences because they are very, very simple. Uh, we don't have more information about the things that we are describing. In this case, we are just saying something about the noun that we have in the sentence. So, all of these uh, sentences are positive degree. 
because in that case, we are not making comparison of anything. And we are not saying that we have the, the more beautiful or the most beautiful thing in the world. So this is the first part or the positive degree of adjectives. Now we are going to see the comparative degree. Vamos a ver lo que son los eh, degree, el, el grado de comparación. Comparative degree. And in this one, it says that this is the form of the adjective that describes a higher degree of that particular quality that the positive degree. It is used when two objects are being compared. In this case, we are going to have two different objects and we are making a comparison between them. Aquí sí tenemos dos cosas que comparar. Aquí es donde vamos a empezar a hacer las comparaciones entre dos objetos. So in that case, it's making a comparison between um, these uh, two objects. For example, and we are going to have the, the, the general information here. And it says this is the form of the adjective. that describes a higher degree of that particular quality than the positive degree. It is used and we have here the example. And it says, My sweet case is he heavier. My suitcase is heavier than yours. So let's see, we have the same sentence as the number one that we have for the positive degree. We have the same suitcase. So in this case, we don't have just one, we have two suitcase. My suitcase is heavier. This one is the adjective, but we are doing something different. It is not like in the first one because you can see here that we have the word heavy. And here we have heavier than yours. Aquí cambiamos la forma del adjetivo. Ya no es el mismo, sino que se le agrega algo más. Porque estamos diciendo que my suitcase is más pesado que el tuyo. So in that case, we are making a comparison of the uh, weight of the things. But in this case, we are not going to write more examples right now because we are going to see the construction of the adjectives and also we are going to see the, um, the formulas to create sentences using these adjectives. So in this case, we're just going to have the general information. Vamos a ver solo la información general y luego yo les voy a estar dando lo que son las fórmulas para hacer oraciones y cómo crear eh, estos eh, adjetivos. So we are going to continue with the other one and then we are going to see the construction. Then we have the superlative. And this one said, this is the form of the adjective that describes the highest degree, the highest, el más alto of that particular quality. 
it is used when more than two objects are being compared. In this case, we are uh, having like a group of things. Aquí tenemos más de dos cosas. Un grupo de cosas o tres o más. This is the form. This is the form of the adjective. That describes the highest degree. of that particular quality. And we have an example. It says, my suitcase is the heaviest of all. My suitcase is the heaviest of all. Aquí estamos diciendo que es el más pesado de todos. No hay ninguno que se le compare. And we have this form that is different from the others that we were using. In the positive is heavy, in the comparative is heavier, and in superlative is heaviest. And then we have a specification here about the, the article that we can use in these um, sentences. And it says that the article the is always add before the superlative degree. Cuando tenemos el superlative, vamos a agregar el, uh, el artículo. The before the superlative degree. And we have the example. Raúl is the tallest boy in the class. So in that case, when we are using this one, the superlative to express that someone is in the top, for example, something, we are going to use the article the. Siempre vamos a utilizar el artículo cuando estemos refiriéndonos a estos superlativos. Porque es el que nos dice a nosotros que es el único, ¿verdad? Que no hay nada que se le compare. Sometimes the comparative degree is formed by using the word more before the positive degree. But this specification we are going to see in the next information. Because we are going to see how to create that adjectives. So in that case, we are going to see uh, the uses of more also with uh, the adjectives. And it said that similarly, the superlative degree is sometimes formed by use the word must. In comparative, we have more and superlative, we have must. If the words many, much, more, or most are used before a noun, they are themselves adjectives qualifying that noun. If the words more and most are used before the adjective, they are adverse, but doing the word of an adjective by qualifying that adjective. But we are going to see how to construct 
those adjectives because we are going to see how to create the superlative and the comparative and uh, what are like the details that we need to know about them. Well, we are going to see the first thing. We're going to have it like number one, comparative adjectives. And remember, our use to compare. Two things. And it says that they help describe differences between the, the between two nouns. So now we're going to see what is the formula that we can use for this um, for these comparative adjectives. We have first the noun, then we have the verb, then we have the comparative adjective. Then we have done and we have the noun. In this case, this noun is the object. And this noun that we have at the beginning is the subject. Esta es la estructura que vamos a estar siguiendo para eh, los comparativos. We are going to have two different nouns in this case. We have the noun number one, that is the subject, and the noun number two, that is the object of the sentence. Then we are going to write the verb, the comparative adjective, then, and the object. But we are going to see an example. We have following the structure. The first thing that I need to write is the noun or the subject on my sentence. And in this case is my television. This is my subject. My television, then I need a verb. And in this case, I'm going to use the verb to be. And I am using a third person singular. So I need to write is. My television is, and I need the adjective. And in this case, I'm going to use this one, big. That is the um, adjective that I am going to use for this sentence. But I need to make it comparative. My television is bigger. And then I need to write then. And I need the other noun that is the object. My computer. And I have the sentence. Esa es la estructura, ¿verdad? Ya con un ejemplo, cómo nos va a ir quedando nuestras oraciones. My television is bigger than my computer. Televisión es mi sujeto porque es el... el el main subject or the main noun that I am uh, referring to. Then I have to write the verb. In this case, it's the verb to be. Then I need to have the adjective. Then is always in that spot. And then the other noun that is the one in which I am making the comparison. Ahí estoy haciendo la comparación entre la televisión y la computadora. Son mis dos nombres, mis dos sujetos y objetos, 
Y ahí están los elementos ya eh, escritos o transformados en different words. In some cases, the sentence will end after the comparative adjective and not include the object of comparison. And this structure is possible when the context it has provided enough information to make the comparison clear. In this case, I have the object of my sentence, but in some cases it is not necessary to add it because I was talking about that situation, that person, that thing, and I don't need to um, include in the sentence. But we are going to focus on this kind of sentence first. So we can make more examples about this one. So we are going to see, we need a subject. For example, my dog is, hmm, let's see, it's, we need an adjective in this case, is smaller than your dog. My dog is smaller than your dog. In this case, because we are going to focus on comparative. In this case, uh, for the creation of these adjectives, we need to, to see how many syllables that words have. And also we need to, to see the construction of the words. If we have vowels, if we have consonants, how many letters that word has and all of the things. So we are going to see how to create the comparative adjectives depending on the way we are eh, writing that word. Para crear los comparativos, nos vamos a fijar mucho en la estructura de la palabra, pero ya vamos a ver por qué es necesario que sepamos cómo está construida esta palabra. So, it says that changing an adjective into its comparative or superlative form depends on the number of syllables in the base form of the adjective. Depende mucho de cuántas sílabas tenga la palabra base o el adjetivo base. Ahí es donde nosotros vamos a ir viendo qué le agregamos. For example, we are going to have here creating comparative adjectives. So it says one syllable adjective. One syllable adjectives. This one are adjectives that are very, very short. That has just one syllable, que solo tienen una sílaba. Adjetivos muy, muy cortos. The suffix er. will be asked for comparative adjectives. When the word Okay, in this case, the suffix is el final que le agregamos nosotros um, a las palabras. Es lo final. 
vamos a agregarle ER a estas eh, comparativas. ER es el final que se le va a agregar. Pero si tenemos una palabra que tenga una sola vocal en medio de dos consonantes, vamos a doblar, o sea, vamos a escribir dos veces la última consonante. Por ejemplo, we have here the adjective hot. Hot. Tenemos una consonante, una vocal y una consonante. We need to write ER, but also we need to, to double the second consonant. Vamos a doblar la segunda consonante y vamos a agregar ER. Nos quedaría así. Harder. Like this. And we have an example. The temperature is hotter today than yesterday. La temperatura es mm, más caliente ahora que ayer. And we are going to see some examples more. I'm going to have like a table in which we're going to see more examples. We have the adjective and we have the comparative. For example, we have fast and for comparative is faster. Then we have another one that is cheap. And for comparative is cheaper. Then we have fresh. Fresher. Then we have big, that in this case, we are going to double the consonant, bigger. And then we have sad and sadder. Así nos están quedando lo que son los, uh, los adjetivos. En este caso, como son de una sola sílaba, solo le vamos a agregar ER. Y en el caso de tener consonante, vocal y consonante, doblamos la última consonante y agregamos ER. Estos son para los, los adjetivos que son cortos, ¿verdad? Then we have two syllable adjectives. Son los que tienen dos sílabas. They are kind of more or longer than the others. They are not like very, very long. Uh, for comparative adjectives, the suffix er will be add or will be preceded by more. Okay, in this case, we are going to have the same structure. We are going to write ER at the end, or we are going to use more at the beginning. Vamos a utilizar solo la ER al final, o vamos a utilizar more cuando la palabra sea eh, un poco más larga. Y en el caso de que tengamos Y en el final, lo vamos a transformar en una I. Pero vamos a ver los ejemplos. We have adjectives and we have comparative. And for the adjective, we have gentle. And we have gentle. The second one, clumsy. Clumsier. 
Then we have happy, happier. Aquí le estamos cambiando la Y y estamos agregando I. Anxious. And here we are using more, more anxious. And for the last one, polite. And we are going to use more polite. And for the three syllables, that is the last part that we are going to see. In this case, we are going to write more with the word because they are longer. We have important, attractive, and we have embarrassed. And we are going to write just more at the beginning. More important. More attractive. Así que ahí están los tres eh, grupos que vamos a ver hasta el momento de los comparativos. Uno, donde solo tenemos que agregar ER o doblar la consonante y agregar ER. En el segundo, ya vamos agregando o cambiando algunas letras, como lo es la Y por una I y agregar more. Y para las de tres sílabas o más, que son más largas, le vamos a agregar inmediatamente more al adjetivo sin cambiarle nada de los finales. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow because we are going to talk about the vocabulary and the exercises tomorrow. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the session number three. Okay, thank you. Bye, see you tomorrow. Bye.